think we're already at the point that the reef will probably never be the same. It was wiping out over 90% of the individuals on the reef. Unbelievably deadly, incredibly contagious. So it's so important, the work that we're doing. It's essential for Florida and for the entire world. My name is George, and in this video, we're visiting some of the largest zoos and aquariums in the United States. I'm here to learn about an environmental threat wiping out an animal species that if this country loses, will end up having devastating consequences for all American citizens, Florida's Coral Reef. I was surprised to find out that the Florida Reef Tract, which stretches 360 linear miles around the coast of Florida, is one of the largest coral reef systems in the world. To put in perspective how amazing of a resource this really is, only half of the world's countries have access to a coral reef within their borders. And only a handful of countries have one as big as the Florida Reef Tract. Basically the way I describe coral is an invertebrate, it's related to jellyfish, and it uses a stony base as its home. People think they're plants, people think they're colorful rocks, not many people realize they're even alive. It's an amazing animal, it does eat, it's also photosynthetic, it's like a plant, and they're also an animal, it's a symbiosis. These corals will split themselves asexually and form these large colonies, it becomes reefs. So Florida, the whole state, is built on a reef system. Even if you don't live in Florida, here's why you should be concerned. With more than 50% of the U.S. population living near a coast, I was shocked to learn that we're about to lose this national treasure. Recently in 2014, an extremely deadly disease popped up called stony coral tissue loss disease. Divers and government agencies have been fighting the stony coral tissue loss disease. Now almost everyone has heard by now that coral reefs are facing huge environmental challenges like overfishing, port dredging, and bleaching. But this disease is unfortunately wiping out corals on the reef of Florida's coast at a rate that's 10 times more deadly than all of those other threats combined. Scientists and researchers have been trying to combat this disease, but so far have not been able to identify where it came from or how to stop it. This disease kills up to 90% of the corals that it affects, and they really haven't found a good reason for the disease yet. They're not really sure. They think it may be virus, bacteria, temperature, pollution related. A lot of us think it's a combination of all those factors together. A lot of scientists thought it was just a disease we'd seen previously. But a few years in, we realized this disease wasn't waning off. It just kept spreading and spreading. That really prompted this coral rescue effort. In a last-ditch effort to save the remaining corals from going extinct, federal and Florida state agencies started pulling out dozens of these unique coral species ahead of the disease path to create a gene bank. The corals in this gene bank are going to be held here until either A, the disease takes its course, or B, a cure to this deadly disease is found. Florida Fish and Wildlife also decided that to increase the security and chance of survival of this gene bank, that they should send a set of each of these coral species to AZA accredited zoos and aquariums around the country. So far, about 2,000 corals have been rescued from their homes and relocated to 22 zoos and aquariums in more than a dozen states. AZA accredited zoos and aquariums meet the highest standards in animal care and welfare. They undergo a thorough review to ensure that education and conservation are the highest priorities. The largest group is still held locally in Orlando. So as I said, George, this is the Florida Coral Rescue Center. We're heading into right now, we hold about 700 uh, different corals here. The first thing you'll notice is definitely the lighting. We have a lot of those, this Radeon Gen 4 lighting. We actually have over 100 of them in this building right now. In total, we have about 7,000 gallons of water. Each one of these tanks is eight foot by four foot, about 300 gallons. Currently, we have 16 of these large tanks. The purpose of this facility is basically, we, what we did is we took the corals from the wild and we're gonna hold them here in our care as long as needed. Maybe a year, maybe five years, could be longer. We're hoping that eventually they get put back in the wild. That is the ultimate goal, is to basically reestablish, repopulate the reefs in Florida with the corals we're holding here. It's not only us, there's a lot of other aquariums out there in zoos that are also taking their share of corals. We really have the largest genetic sampling of all the other institutions. So we have about a third of the project corals. We're really looked upon to be the gene bank, the seed bank for the next generation of growing corals. Disney was able to contribute a lot of money, along with AZA, and there's other entities that have also chipped in. SeaWorld basically will provide the husbandry knowledge, basically the staffing for the facility. So we are the ones that are taking care of the coral. It's kind of a rare partnership, but it's great to know that when it comes down to conservation and the future of the Florida reefs, that we're both on the same page. Average coral size here is eight to 10 inches. That's important when it comes to reproduction. If we ever want these corals to reproduce in captivity here, they can't be little small fragments. These are huge. This is not what aquarium hobbyists at home are used to seeing on a frag plug. This is like a foot and a half, two foot frag plug. A lot 
lot of them, when they came in, they were smaller than their tile. And you can see the ones here in the middle, they've actually grown over the tile. This is what they would look like in the wild. If you went in the wild, you'd see colonies like this. Now, I know many of you watching right now keep corals at home in your saltwater aquariums. And if you're like me, you probably never really gave much thought to all of the coral that lives right off the coast of Florida. This is because all of the coral that is sold at fish stores and kept by home aquarists here in the United States actually comes imported from either the Indo-Pacific or Australian waters and coral reefs. These are Caribbean corals, completely off limits for the hobbyists. We're learning this as we go. A lot of these corals haven't been kept in captivity before, so anything we do is kind of cutting edge. It's a little bit new to the hobby. It's definitely new to us. These were never really allowed to be collected by the US government. That's why you don't see them in the hobby. When we think about like the coral we're used to keeping in reef aquariums, that we just don't have that knowledge here. So we've just had to like crowdsource it internally across these institutions where everybody's like, okay, what's your problems? Let's try and figure it out as a group. Every week we jump on a call for about an hour on Thursdays to talk to each other, ways maybe we can improve things. There's so many people that need to come together to do a project like this. Institutions that are going out collecting the corals. We have certain institutions that are holding corals. Facilities like us that are long-term holding. We have husbandry questions about our corals. I can easily talk to another facility and we can collaborate. Collaboration has been a huge aspect of this. Hundreds of AZA zoos and aquariums are now taking care of these corals, dedicating their staff and resources to understanding how these corals behave and searching for a cure to the disease. I think it's a thing that more people should know about, especially people involved and interested in the coral care and husbandry and the, and the hobby side of things. This problem is out of sight and out of mind for the majority of Americans because obviously the reef is only physically accessible to Floridians. However, the ecological and financial impact of losing this coral reef will be felt at a national level. Because these corals act as nature's seawall for our coastline. So when that wave energy comes in during a hurricane, during a storm, it is being broken up by the corals. You can see this, the waves are actually breaking off the coast. When that reef dies, the waves that used to break onto the reef now will just come in and break right onto the beach or onto the condos that line southeast Florida. And when you lose major reef building species, it has a devastating impact on all of the other animals that rely on that reef for habitat. Coral reefs support jobs, tourism, and fisheries. In fact, each year, coral reefs pump more than $3.4 billion into the U.S. economy. The fish that live on coral reefs are shipped all over the world. The lobster and all the different animals that use the reef as their home are commercially important species. These reefs are protecting infrastructure, shipping ports that deliver goods all over the country and all over the world. Really what's at stake for the Florida reefs is that generations of Floridians, they're not going to be able to see what a thriving coral reef looks like. Really this is the only coral reef in America right now. It's really hard to find a healthy, vibrant reef anymore. It matters for the people in the country because the coral reefs protect us from hurricanes. Hurricanes are a huge cost. It can also affect the national budgets. Just by saving Florida money, you can be confident that you know, you're saving the States money. You're saving everybody money by preventing these hurricanes. Corals can't grow back overnight. It can take years for corals to grow from inches to a foot in length on the reef. With more corals disappearing each day, this state of emergency has forced scientists and marine biologists to work on a faster way to repopulate the reef. Research on the sexual reproduction of coral, also called coral spawning, is one innovative solution being led by senior scientist Carrie O'Neill. To me, it's one of the most amazing phenomenon that happens on Earth. Science still doesn't really understand how coral spawning happens. How do all of these corals know to release their eggs and sperm all at the same time? We'd know enough to know that that has something Thing to do with the solar cycles and the lunar cycles because it does coincide with full moons in different months. You know, the spawning is amazing. We just didn't have the technology to do it 10 years ago. And that's really because of the aquarium hobby that we now have off the shelf technology that is designed to keep corals happy long term in an aquarium. This tank setup actually mimics Key Largo, Florida. So, for all intents and purposes, these corals corals think that they're in the ocean in Key Largo. So literally every coral in this tank has spawned right on time with its natural cycle. This tank here can produce a half a million coral larvae that can then be settled and raised and used to repopulate the reef. So a lot of the work that we're doing here at the Center for Conservation 
is directly preventing species from going extinct, like the pillar coral. There's only 40 of them left in the wild in the state of Florida. We have 220 here at our center, and we're able to reproduce them and make offspring. When the spawning happens in this tank, it's amazing. Millions of tiny, tiny little eggs just floating everywhere in the tank. On a coral reef, 90% of those just, they die, right? Here, you can almost ensure that 90% are put into the process of being raised. That week of spawning, excitement and anxiety is at level 20. They only spawn once a year. So the last thing we want is to throw them off and then have to wait a whole another year. But spawning is just one step, right? Then you have to raise the babies. <laughs> so these are our coral greenhouses. So after we get a spawn in the lab and we have larvae, we will literally carry the larvae and take them into the greenhouse where we can settle them and grow thousands of baby corals. We have now developed the techniques to raise them from larvae on land in pretty high numbers. So we have up to 50% post-settlement survival, which is crazy high compared to like what they would get in the wild. All of these tanks are just more babies, more babies, more babies, smaller babies, bigger babies, all the babies. This year we settled 105,000 babies. So we keep them in these special bins until they get to a size and like a strong enough skeleton so that they can handle being out in the big boy tank basically. Yeah, so the cost per coral is a really important question. Imagine restoring an entire coral reef. We're talking millions and millions and millions of corals. So if I sit here and tell you each coral costs $1,000, then that's just all of a sudden becomes a ridiculous goal. So generally, we're trying to keep that cost per coral well under $100. This one right here is- Is a beast. Enormous. So this is one of the biggest pieces of coral that they have here. And it's what, you think about 20, 30 pounds? Yes, yeah, definitely. <laughs> so this time, I mean, it could still be 50 plus years old. So we have a ton of biologists who work daily in the coral greenhouses, and they could spend six hours a day just cleaning corals. We have so many babies that need a lot of attention. Our veterinarian, Dr. Lindsay Waxman, is actually inspecting some of our corals that are going to be released back into the ocean. You know, this is about a year of growth, so these are from 2020. This is for predation protection when they first go out. The last thing you want is to have a year of work go down into the belly of a parrotfish in a minute. This is a lot more work than I think most people realize. Yes, it's all based on just being a good aquarist, right? It's all the same concepts that you use to take care of corals in your aquarium at home. What we're doing right now wouldn't be possible without the drive of hobbyists. Keep doing what you're doing. Keep wanting better products for your corals. Everything we have here is basically hobbyist grade. The lights, the flow pumps, the fractionators, calcium reactors, it's all things that are available to hobbyists. Keep learning about corals. Keep documenting what's happening in your tanks. Be a scientist. Because these corals, they don't belong to SeaWorld, they belong to the people of Florida. Basically, that's their reef. This is their reef. It may not be me or you, but it could be the next generation of aquarists, the next generation of citizens that, that actually see the reefs come back. That's the ultimate goal put them back on the reef. The Florida Reef Track is a treasure. It is a major concern that it is dying and there needs to be significant investment into saving it. And, and we're getting some of that. It's not enough. Corals are animals. They're dying. They're in trouble. They're important. And we should do something to save them. I just want to thank everyone at the AZA and all these different institutions who are participating in this effort. You guys are all doing an amazing job and I'm really lucky that I got to meet some of you in this video. There's so many more that are behind the scenes working on this project at other AZA institutions that weren't featured. And so on behalf of all my viewers and the people involved, I just want to thank you guys. It's something that we definitely appreciate. I also want to thank Fritz Aquatics for funding this trip. This was a week long initiative. I went out to three or four different institutions and Fritz Aquatics was heavily involved Involved. I love that there's an aquarium company in our industry that values conservation and all the work that all these people are doing. So thank you to Fritz Aquatics. I will leave links down in my description below to all the different facilities that are participating so you guys can actually see if there's a public aquarium or institution near you that you can visit. And like so many people in this video have said, the money that you guys spent for admission into some of these institutions actually directly goes towards the conservation in this project and also so many other amazing things that public aquariums are doing for us behind the scenes. So this was really eye-opening for me. I appreciate the opportunity to be able to share this story. Make sure to like the video so we can help spread this message to as many people as possible. Share the video with any friends or family or other hobbyists in this industry that you think might not know about what's going on. I'll see you guys in the next one. But until then, remember to keep those nitrates low. George.
out.